This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about static CE 2301. Specifically, we're talking about principal axes and principal moments of inertia. This is from chapter 8.4.3 in the book. The principal moments of inertia, I, are the maximum and minimum moments of inertia. And they're very important to know what those are. We often measure things in X and Y coordinates and moments of inertia in those X and Y coordinates, but we need to know the maximum and the minimums. So we can take the, the double angle formula that we dealt with last chapter, which is basically, this is the first part of it, I, U, the moment of inertia, but the U axis is these terms. And we can take the derivative of that with respect to theta, the rotation angle, and set that equal to zero, and we get uh, the result is the tangent, inverse tangent of that angle, 2 theta p, is where p, theta p is the angle of rotation to get the principal axes, the maximum and minimum, is this formula here, 2 ixy product of inertia over this uh, i y minus ix. So, I can see that I'm going to get, there's two solutions to this formula. And so there are two principal axes. One of them is the maximum and one's the minimum. They are 90 degrees apart. Their twice angle, twice theta formula is 180 degrees apart. And I can substitute one, once I solve for this value, I can substitute one principal angle into the double angle formulas to determine which one's which. And we'll illustrate that uh, down here in an example. Okay, I can, um, once I get, once I know what theta p is, I can rearrange my, uh, um, I can substitute theta p is equal to that, 2 theta p is equal to that, or the tangent of that, is into the double angle formulas, and I can get a direct formula for my maximum and minimum, mom minimum moment of, moments of inertia. That is, the I max and minimum is equal to this term, I x, y, I x plus I y over 2, plus or minus the square root of this expression. Ix minus Iy squared over 2 squared plus Ixy squared. Okay, so here's an example of that using the formulas. That example that I did last time in the previous video was of a 3 by 4 rectangle along the x and y axes. Remember we computed bh cubed over 3 to get Ix and Iy of 36 and of 64 and 36. The product of inertia was 36 inches to the fourth. And so I can figure out from the formula right here what my maximum and minimum moments of inertia are. 64 plus 36 divided by 2 plus or minus this expression. This expression simplifies out to the square root of that is 38.63. So my maximum is 50 plus 38.63 or 88.63. My minimum is 50 minus 38.63 or 11.37 inches to the fourth. Okay, I can also solve for what that angle is using this formula, which is 2 theta p is equal to the tangent inverse of this expression, 2 times 36, which is Ixy, over 36 minus 64. I've got to be consistent with my sign conventions. This is going to give me a negative number on the bottom. Plugging that into my calculator, I get that the 2 theta p is equal to negative 68.75 degrees. I can uh, subtract 180 degrees from that or add 180 degrees to it. Same thing, and I get 111.25 degrees and so those are my two angles double my angles of my principal angles of rotation 
I can uh, therefore draw it on my little diagram, divide that number by 2, remembering that theta is measured counterclockwise positive, so negative 68.75 divided by 2 is negative 34.38 degrees, so that is a clockwise negative rotation. So my principal axes are sort of like this, U and V. I substitute into the uh, double angle formula for IU and I get 64 plus, I just put in all those terms with the cosine of 2 theta P, my principal angle of rotation, and I get this expression. I do the math and I get 50 plus 5.07 for this part minus negative 33.55 for this final part and I get that IU is equal to 88.63 so that means that this is the angle U is the axis that corresponds to the uh, negative 68.75 divided by 2 angle of rotation V is the one that corresponds to a half that number and that's the angle of rotation positive counterclockwise to the V axis. So that shows the graphical method for solving for maximum and minimum minimum moments of inertia. Which leads us right into the companion um, method of solving for these things, Moore's circle. Moore was a German guy in the 1800s that came up with this graphical method of rotation of coordinates. And there is the one that we've just been talking about, the equation method with the double angle formulas, the tangent 2 theta p formula, tangent inverse. Moore's method is a graphical method, which puts it on a circle, makes it very visual, very easy to comprehend. I really like this one. Uh, the double angle formulas rearranged look like this. And this was part of Moore's brilliance, was to recognize this. If I take these double angle formulas and rearrange them, I can get this expression. IU minus IX plus IY over 2 whole quantity squared plus IUV, the product of inertia, I about a U and V, squared is equal to this expression, ix minus iy over 2 squared plus ixy squared. Well, that looks to more and to the math people like the formula for a circle, which is a squared plus b squared is equal to r squared. So, what more did, did and we're going to do is use this relationship to plot these values on a circle where we can just look at the circle and figure out things. So I'm going to try to do this, not move my board. The first step is to plot Ix and Ixy, and I've got to do it on a coordinate system that looks like this. The horizontal axis is Ix or Iy or Iu or Iv as it goes horizontal. The vertical axis is the product of inertias, Ixy or Iuv, depending on what axis I'm looking at. So I plot Ix and Ixy, say I say it's right there, Ix and Ixy. Then over here, the next I plot Iy and negative product of inertia Ixy. So I say that's like right here. And I haven't drawn my circle yet if I'm really doing this. I've done this for my convenience so I don't have an ugly circle. Plot I at IY and I negative IXY. Then I draw a diagonal that connects the two. Remember, I wouldn't have a circle drawn yet. Just draw a line that connects those two. Okay, I note that it's going to cross my moment of inertia axis, this horizontal axis, at a point there. That is the center of my circle. And so that center is at the value of Ix plus Iy divided by 2. So it's kind of the average, or it is the average of Ix and Iy. 
and so that is going to be its coordinates. It's going to get cluttered. And of course it's lying on that axis, so its product of inertia is zero, as I've noted there. Okay, now I can see that there's a triangle that I know the values of, so I can compute angles. So I know that I draw that line. I see this triangle here that I'm interested in, and it looks like that. And this leg of the triangle right here is IXY. Draw that right here. IX minus IY divided by 2. That's that distance IX minus IY is this total distance from here to here from here to here divided by 2 is half that distance or that distance right there. This leg of the triangle is just IXY. It's that value right there. So now what I want to know is my radius, the length of that line, that red line, which is half of my diagonal, my diameter, and that's just the square root of the sum of the squares. Take this value, Ix minus Iy over 2, square it, add to it the product of inertia Ixy squared, and I get that that's the length of that radius, just a number. It's getting too cluttered, I'm not going to draw it up there. Now I can see my maximum and minimum moment of inertias are along this axis, and that's I max, and this is I minimum over here, and I get those numbers by adding the coordinates of the center. Ix plus Iy over 2 to the radius. So I max is the center plus the radius. I minimum is the center minus the radius. And so at that point, I need to note that the product of inertia, Iuv, I'll call it, is equal to 0 because it lies on that axis. Ix or Iuv, Ixy or Iuv is equal to zero along this axis. Lastly, I can compute my angle of rotation right here, which is double my angle of rotation of the uh, axis as I plot it on a coordinate system. This is two theta p. Getting all cluttered, but you can see what I'm doing there. The tangent of that angle, 2 theta, of that angle is the opposite, Ixy, over Ix minus Iy over 2, opposite over adjacent. Take the tangent inverse, and then I can get what 2 theta p is, which is the angle of rotation to the principal axes. I've also got another one over here that is 2 theta p subtracted from 180 which is this distance right here, this angle which is coming from this formula up here where I get two solutions to that formula right here. This formula is just a rearranged version of this formula right up here. The formula version of the angle of principal axes.